When I was about to die, my body lit up. Like when I leave my house without my wallet. What am I missing? I ask, patting my chest pocket. And I am missing everything living that won't come with me into this sunny afternoon. My body lights up for life like all the wishes being granted in a fountain at the same instant, all the coins burning the fountain dry. And I give my breath to a small bird-shaped pipe. In the distance, behind several voices haggling, I hear a sound like heads clicking together, like a game of pool played with people by machines. So it's August the 23rd and it's the fourth week in my 52 poems in 52 weeks challenge and I wanted to learn for this week uh, a poem by Max Ritfo, one of my favorite poets who wrote this wonderful collection um, for reincarnations. I wanted to learn a Ritfo poem because I love Ritfo's poetry but also because a year ago this week uh, Max Ritfo passed away at the age of 25 after struggling for a number of years with Ewing sarcoma, um, a, a, a rare um, awful form of cancer, although all cancer is pretty awful. And I wanted to learn this poem because it's so bittersweet. It's so present with life, like this bee or wasp that is <laughs> buzzing around my face as I, as I speak. And it is also so um, embodied with and saturated with mortality and with, the, and with death that is hurtling towards Max and coming at all of us um, perhaps with slightly different speeds. The wonderful thing about learning a poem by heart is that when you are learning the poem and when you are reciting the poem, you get for those moments to not only embody the poem, but in a way to actually sort of be in the mind and heart and soul of the poet who, write, who, who, who wrote it. That's, that's how it feels to me anyway. And so, you know, learning a poem like this um, has made me feel very close to Max Ritfo, even though he's no longer around. And it's also brought out things in the poem which I hadn't felt before. Um, I'd seen them, I'd read them, but I hadn't felt them. For example, that incredible middle section, uh, my body lights up for life, like all the wishes being granted in a fountain at the same instant, all the coins burning the fountain dry. Now when you read that on the page, it's fantastic. But when you learn it and say it, what happens is that because it's such a long line and because it's got such force behind it, it drains the breath out of you pretty quickly. 
and you get to the end of the line and you are winded. I don't know if you saw that when I was reciting it. You, you, you literally have got nothing in you. And then you breathe and you take a glorious lungful of air into your body again. And then you say, and I gave my breath to a small, and I give my breath to a small bird-shaped pipe. Which is of course what, what Max is doing in this poem, is giving his breath to us. But it is of course also what we do, what we all do at the end of our lives. <clears throat> we give our breaths to, to other, other forms of life. What I love about this poem is that you might read the first line and think, okay, here we go, this is going to be a bit of a feel-good poem, right? Um, when I was about to die, my body lit up. Wow, my body lit up. Transcendence. Um, you know, all those cheesy, I saw the light, I saw the light moments from film and television. But it ends, as it should do, as somebody who has probably stared death in the face, up close and um, sour-breathed on a daily basis for 10 years, as Max did, it ends with anger and a certain amount of bitterness and, 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 and a valid, a justified anger and bitterness. In the distance, behind several voices haggling, I hear a sound like heads clicking together. Oh, there's something so painful about those heads clicking together. Like a game of pool played with people by machines. Such an incredible poem. Thank you, Max, for writing it. Thank you for listening.